This is Rob Booker. And this is Dave Murphy. Yeah, exactly. Never said that. Maude, I owe you big time. <laughs> I owe you big time. I owe you way more than lunch. So <laughs> we're not even until you get way more than lunch. This is Rob Booker. And this is Dave Murphy. And this is the uh, FX Street uh, monthly webinar on support and resistance. Yes. Sponsored by Postcards yep. from the Right Edge mm -hmm. at postcards.fxstreet.com. Which is where you can get um, two, three, four times a week video updates of support and resistance trades that we're working on, totally and completely for free. Free. Okay. Today we're going to go over. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time on the basics. We're going to go back over and redo some of the basics. So for some of you, some of this is going to be review. But I also want to say. I think, Dave, we need to spend some time talking today about, and there's no chart on right now, but there will be in a minute. Um, we need to talk about the dual trend line trading. Yeah. Because that's really become a methodology that we use over and over and over again. And it, I think it would take a little bit, it would take a little while to teach. It's not something that's, you know, immediately and obviously apparent to somebody mm -hmm. as a trading strategy. Really? I, I thought it's rather simplistic and wonderful in its simplicity. It is simplistic and wonderful, but it's not totally obvious. All right. For example, you should be looking now at a chart. We pull up a chart here, and it's just a, it's a regular old 240-minute chart of the dollar-yen. And there's a trend line underneath it. Now, you could draw a trend line in a variety of places, but as all of you know that have studied anything about trend lines, is in order to draw a trend line, you simply need point A to start from, and then a point B, C, D, or others to connect it. You can't draw a trend line on one point. You have to have two points. Yes. People ask all the time, well, there's multiple places that you could draw a trend line. Which place is right? Well, I mean, couldn't B be right over here? Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah, it could. And that's the problem with trend line is there's always multiple places you can draw them. And for people who don't use uh, trend lines or support and resistance, that's one of the major arguments against them is that it's subjective, that your line can be drawn anywhere. And if your line can be drawn anywhere, then there's no way that you can actually have an objective rule-based system upon which to rely. Sure. You can't rely on something that isn't predictable and rule-based. Okay. So you are screwed if you don't have rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The problem with that opinion, in my opinion, is that it overlooks the fact that, Dave, it's obvious that you cannot draw a trend line like this. That's not a trend line. This right. isn't a trend line. That's not a trend line because it doesn't satisfy any of those things that we just said. Correct. Let me just restate the whole thing all over again. A trend line connects point A to point B and can always be drawn in multiple places as long as there are multiple A's and B's. Mm -hmm. What's the definition of an A or a B? We are looking for a pivot style reversal. Imagine that the currency pair operates like the hinge of a door or whatever and that the door right here opens and closes on this hinge. It falls to this area right here at the bottom, Dave, and in this case, this is the dollar-yen, the four-hour chart. Okay. It falls to 95.63, and when it falls to 95.63, let me just make sure we're, there we go, it falls to 95.63, that um, it, it rises back up and bounces off of that level. Now, you don't know that that's a pivot level or a bounce or a reversal point until it reverses. Sure. So there's no, there's no sense in even calling something a pivot or a reversal until there's an obvious, what we would call, V-shaped move, where the currency pair drops, pivots, and comes back up. How many pips? Well, it's got to be obvious. There's no number of pips. There's no number of pips that you can put There's in a no magic book. number. There's no magic number. And that's where people start to get confused. People who, for instance, didn't study the alphabet when they were kids, don't know what the letter V looks like. Mm -hmm. People who 
um, unnecessarily um, are skeptical that never believe what anybody's saying. Yeah. Um, they don't believe, for instance, in aliens. They don't think that Bruce Lee is still alive. Any of those. They're not excited believe. about a Led Zeppelin reunion. People like that. They just don't get it. Jackholes and skepticists that say you can't build something on the basis of subjectivity. Yeah. Well, our opinion is that the entire market is subjectivity. The entire market is chaos. Sure. And anybody who's foolish enough to engage in developing a trading system that relies on predictability and something working the same way all the time is fooling themselves into thinking that it's always going to work the same way, that past performance indicates future results. But we can, we can build ourselves a way of looking at the market right. and... and um, so I think we, it, if we build ourselves yeah. a, a flexible methodology of looking at the market, then we can deal with changes. If you're looking for V-shaped pivots to draw support and resistance, if the market becomes more volatile or less volatile, your system is flexible enough to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. because there's uppercase and lowercase E. Ah, what about W's or L? <laughs> and there's all kinds of other letters. Sure. You could do a V or you could do a sideways L. Yeah. That would mean the market is like just dropping dead. Same thing as a V. Okay. So that starts us off. Let's move to another chart and it'll uh, we possibly if we move to another chart. Yeah, here we go. I'm gonna turn off the sharing and then I'm gonna turn it back on. This is a sixty minute pound dollar chart. So for those of you wondering what chart we're looking at, let me just write it down here. Sixty minute Okay, so that time frame chart we're looking at. 60 minute pound dollar. Everything that we'll say here today, Dave, actually applies to any time frame chart. Great. Any currency pair. That's flexible. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an example here on this 60 minute chart. We could draw trend line number one from point A to point B, which we did. Mm hmm. Trend line number two can go from point A here to the same number of point A there. So like point A, point B, and point A1 because it came before A. Okay. What happens here is, if we go to the 30-minute chart, we might even see it more obvious. Even, even better? I'm likely to move this too much. So. Please be patient. Okay, perfect. You can even see this better. Now it's a 30 minute chart, but you can see it up close. Yeah. Point A and A. Point A1 and regular A. That's a trend line. Okay. Point A and then point B make another trend line. What we often do is what we've called not so innovatively double trend line trading, where a break below trend line blue leads to a move down to trend line A. And on a currency pair, when you can draw two trend lines in this fashion, where one trend line is steeper than the other, in this case, the blue trend line, let's even make this thicker, the blue trend line is steeper than the red trend line. Mm -hmm. A break of that steep trend line leads to a move down to the lesser one. A trend line denotes or identifies a trend. The trend yeah. is up. When there's a trend line underneath the currency pair and it's rising, the trend is up. The problem is that in an upward sloping trend, there are always corrections. Sure. Those corrections don't necessarily eliminate the trend completely, but they do represent the trend. So, for example, a trend line break over here in point C, it might not lead to the end of a trend. It might simply reflect the conclusion of the shorter term steeper trend down to the longer term other trend. Ah. So we use a we use a trend line break down to the red trend line. And what happens at point D? We get a possibility of a buy trade with the original trend that we were looking at. We were looking at upward movement. Yeah. But it was too steep to continue going at that degree and that angle for that long. So it retraced, it retraced a little bit, That's right. or corrected a little bit, mm -hmm. and then it shot up again. Right. So after all is said and done there, and let me replicate that chart. When all is said and done there, 
let's move back and see if we still have our our trend lines on this chart. Just take me a moment. They might be gone, right? They could they could Those trend lines probably left on vacation. Yeah, they did. Look at that, they're gone. Wow. Okay. Well forget that. We'll just go back to this one. So what we could do here, Dave, is all over again draw a trend line underneath these two levels here. Let's make sure this is the difference between the support and resistance and pivot. I was pretty sure that question would come up. I'll answer that question, Blakey. And we could actually trade all over again down to the red trend line. Right. As long as we could go from D, point D to point E, we could do that all over again. Now, I want to make a distinction between trend lines and pivots. Okay. Hear me out, Dave. Yes. A pivot point is an indicator that people use in their trading. Yeah. Pivot point. Peter Bain is, is well known for teaching about this. Other people use them as well. In fact, I use them from time to time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A pivot point is different from a pivot. A pivot in basketball terminology is when you have one foot on the ground that turns as the person has their foot on the floor, they can keep that foot stationary and keep moving and using that foot as a pivot, move in a circle with the foot at the center. If you have a compass in geometry, you put one point down as a pivot and you spin the compass around. That's a pivot. A pivot point is an indicator used in currency trading and is different. What I think of point D and point E, I think of those as pivots. There are places where the currency pair set its foot down and turned. Got it. Not a pivot point. So it's different from a pivot point. Not a, not a pivot point. I hope that answers your question. Okay. No response is enough to convince me that we did. All right. So that's double trend line trading, Dave. Let's look forward on the 30-minute chart here of the pound dollar. Okay. And let's see if there's any opportunities for double trend line trading right now. We've got a trend line. Let's just let's pick out the points first. Okay. Let's move to the stick chart. It might be more evident on a 60 minute chart. Now this to me is an obvious pivot area. Oh, give me a break. I always push the wrong button. All right. That's an obvious pivot. Yeah. It fell here and then it moved back up. That's a V shape. I see it. So you could draw a trend line it's beginning at that at that pivot. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Can you hear me now? It looks like a horizon. That's A. That's point A. Let's get rid of this horizontal line down here. We don't want that to confuse anybody. So that's point A. Now we need a point B. I would look right. I would just look immediately to the right and see, oh, can I just use this as point B? I could use that as point B. Mm -hmm. That was originally point B. I think it was an obvious area. This is another one. This is point C. So we have a trend line there. What about this, Dave? Could I use this as point D down here? Well, I think it's a little lower than, yeah. you know, if you're to extend the line, but yeah. It's a pivot. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a place where the currency pair jumps back upwards. So let's do that. Let's, let's now draw from point A to point B, and we got a new one. Let's change the color to, let's do bright green to distinguish it from anything else. Oh, now I turned the pivot oh, area to uh, bright green. Oh, everything's over. Okay, bright green. And we'll go to point D. We still like a bright green. <laughs> yes, we, we answered your question about... Pivot point. We we answered that. Yeah. And if you didn't hear the answer, you can just go back and review the recorded version. So that's that's the point that we're going to use. We're going to remove points B and C because that trend line was broken, and we're going to rename this point B. So now we make it clean and easy to understand. Point A to point B, we have a trend line. That trend line now extends out into the future. Look, woohoo! Way out. It's way out there. Now, what we can look for, Dave, is we can look for a second trend line that's steeper above this trend line that, once broken, 
would lead to a fall all the way down to the green trend line. Okay. Let's go down to the 30-minute chart, and let's go down to the 15-minute chart. So you can choose different time frames sure. to draw your line. Sure. Why not? Hmm. Now, we could use this point B as our new point, smaller point A. That's, that's possible. Mm -hmm. I want something really nice and steep, something, something that uses, like, something down here in this area, something here or something here as an obvious pivot. This is more obvious to me. See, it jumps up right there. Okay. So maybe just we could just maybe draw a tr uh, a trend line under. Ooh, that's going to be a. Going to be messy. We could draw a trend line underneath it here. Now that's pretty. The the you know it's pretty steep. Mm -hmm. You know that pair just. That's great. Went up. And we want that second trend line to be really steep, don't we? Mm-hmm. Let's extend that to the right, and now we have a dual trend line situation here. Okay. So a break of the blue trend line, a break of blue leads to green. That's kind of like a break of the blue trend line leads to green, like cashola. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see if any questions came in. So it's okay to short in an uptrend. Of course it's okay to short yep. in an uptrend. And anybody who ever taught you anything differently, um, doesn't understand that trends sometimes correct or sometimes trends come to complete ends, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course it's okay to short an uptrend. It's not a trend anymore if it broke the trend line. Exactly. This blue trend, this short-term trend is over at the break of a trend line. That was the original definition of the end of a trend. Is it broke a trend line? Was a broken trend line. For example, I'm going to go to... Let's see here. I'm going to... Turn that off and turn this on. You should now see my Amazon.com web page. Technical analysis stock trend. This is a book by Edward Van McGee in its ninth edition. It's a great book. Here's the book, Technical Analysis of Stock Trends. It's in hardcover. It's sixty-three dollars on Amazon. It's a very expensive book. It's about a thousand pages or more long. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, eight hundred and thirty-two pages. And this is this was the original Bible. It's in its ninth edition. When it was first published, it was all about railroad stocks and stuff like that. Originally, a trend was identified by the occurrence of a trend line, like we just discussed. Mm -hmm. And the end of a trend was identified when that trend line was broken. So it's no longer a trend. That's the whole point. That's what we're saying. So you asked a brilliant question. Gonzalo asks, are steeper trend lines weaker than the more flat ones? And the answer to that is, yeah, it's more likely for a steep trend line to be broken than it is for a flat trend line. It's much easier for a currency pair to break a steep trend line because all it really has to do is move sideways. Davey says, I'm looking at one of your really cool trend lines to trend line moves, setting up on the euro pound four hour with a longer term trend of the daily. Well, I vote that we go look at that right Let's now. Let's take a look. This is our webinar field trip. <laughs> webinar field trip. So we'll start on the daily. Today we're going on the pound, no, euro pound. Okay. Let's see here. Wow, there's some really, mm -hmm. really long trend lines here. Yeah, look at that. I mean, you could draw a trend line on the, the daily. Jeez, my trend lines are all messed up today. Okay. We could draw from point A to point B like that. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a super long-term trend line. Okay, that's one. Okay. Um, now, this, this is going to... I mean, you could do something this long-term, of course. Now, that's a daily setup. I think we could use this as another one. Now, let's move down to a shorter time frame chart. This is a four hour. It's not really much of a shorter time frame. I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick a different time. I'm going to pick the 480 so I can see more. Man, I think I could just use the daily still. Hmm. Hmm. 
Wow. All right. Yeah, we could do something here. We could work with this. Start from there and go up to here. Okay, let's get these trend lines colored correctly. Let's make the steeper trend line blue. Make the text color white so we can read it better. So five. Let's make the shorter term trend line green. Let's make that five. And there you go. A, a break and a close below the blue trend line, Dave, should lead us down to the green trend line. Yeah. Now, I don't know if... Oh, yeah, here. Sorry. Start it over here. All that blue stuff on the side of the screen there, just ignore it. What I did here was, folks, we, we drew point A here and point B here. So there's A and there's B. And that's our green trend line. We extended it out into the future so it would just go off into perpetuity. This happens to be the daily euro pound. All right. What we did, we followed up with, was a second trend line with point A here and point B here. And we extended that trend line. We should do those in lower case. Good idea. Please turn your speakers on so you can hear the alarm of my private message. Can you start again, please? Yeah, we did. We did start again. So, um, so a break of point A to point B, that second trend line, that blue trend line, mm -hmm. would lead us down eventually to the green trend line. So what we're waiting for now is we're waiting for a close below the blue trend line leading to a move all the way down to the green line. Right. And that, that's... And let's back it up here so we can even get a better view. So there it is from start to finish. There's the whole thing. Now there's a red trend line that's super long term down here. That red trend line, if we break the green one, then we'd be making our way all the way down to the red trend line. So, so this provides us some good concrete. Yeah. Solid foundations for trading. <laughs> Those are rules. These are rules. Those are rules. Now, the problem is that drawing the trend lines in the first place can be subjective, and right. people can have troubles drawing those trends. And that's understandable. Yeah. No big deal. But we, totally these cool. are things that we can practice. Yep, those are things that you can practice. Here's the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. This is a four-hour chart, and I just wanted to show this um, because it reviews some other principles that we use often. As you can see, uh, we'll have to go back to the four-hour chart. Some time ago, how far back in the past are pivots relevant? Um, if the trend line is relevant forever, mm -hmm. meaning you can go back as far as you want to draw a trend line, as far back as you want. Doesn't matter. There is no. There is no. Um, yeah, I turned the chart off for a reason. I'm not ready yet to show the chart. Um, there's no distance that's too far back, meaning you want to set up your trade and you have to go back. Let's say you have to go back so far that the candles on your charts are all scrunched up and really small. So let's use an example of that. This is just the Australian New Zealand. Let's say you had to scrunch your, your candles up so much that they looked all crazy and you couldn't right. see them very well. Well, that would be a, 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 a that would be an alert to you. That would be a sign that you needed to move up some time frames. Look at the longer term time frame so you can actually see the can. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, here's a channel that we had on the New Australian dollar to the New Zealand dollar. And Dave, um, this channel we drew because we had point A up here. Uh huh. And we had point B right over here, Okay. point C right here, point D right here. But C and D connected to each other, A and B connected to each other, and they were parallel lines. Got it. So they're just trend lines. So once you know how to do trend lines, you know how to do channels. Yeah, you can do, they're just parallel lines. Parallel trend, trend lines. Line. Yeah. And so what we can produce here on this chart is a channel. 
Now, if the currency pair breaks out of this channel, like it does in that shaded area that you see above, mm -hmm. if it breaks out of that area, that leads to uh, a move. It can right. lead to a really long move, and it can go as far upwards outside that channel as the original width of the channel itself. Let me give you an example of that. Let's go to our level. Let's go to let's do one, two, and three. What happens after it breaks out is it can eventually travel all the way up to at least 100% of the distance. For example, in this case, once it broke out above the channel, it traveled upwards all the way up to 1.1700, or approximately that, that level. It moved the same distance outside the channel as the, width as the original of the, original of the channel itself. And that's what we call... Winnipeg. We call that just because that's the name we gave it when we invented it. Yeah, we stand, yeah, we know. Pivot points are math calculations for the day, week, or month where support and resistance lines can go back years. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right, Stoyan, and that's the big difference. Okay. So that's the current uh, and you can see how the, the bottom of the channel comes back and you know, repeats itself over time. Absolutely. Okay, so now it's broken out and we've broken outside that channel. Now we can leave those channel lines there. We can if we want, right? Sure. Right? Yeah. We can leave those there indefinitely. But on the Australian dollar to the New Zealand dollar on the four hour chart, I simply want to draw a trend. And I'm going to color it blue since it's our, it's our steepest trend line that we can draw. Dave, is there an obvious area that this could fall to if it breaks that trend line? Um, I think it'd fall back down to one of those those red lines. It would fall back down to the Winnipeg line yeah. the outside of the channel, or it could mm -hmm. fall back to the top of the channel itself. Exactly. It's a, it's, an, it's, a tr it's a double trend line type trade, although it's not two trend lines. It's one trend line and one top of the channel. Mm -hmm. Let me give an example of that right here. Somebody could draw a trend line across these two points from here to here and these are your two pivot areas or reversal areas underneath which you draw the trend line. They could draw that and t trade the break of that trend line down to the bottom of it, down to the top of the channel. That would be an obvious to me idea for a trend line trade. This is the Australian dollar New Zealand dollar four hour chart. AB asks would you have closed the trade when it back inside the channel? If yes, would you have taken the trade again after breaking above the channel? Yes, on both of those questions. Where would you have set your stop loss? Well, let's, let's actually let's look at stop losses in terms of the present one we're looking at because okay. that's something you can use. Yeah. If I were to trade on the break of this blue trend line, so it closes below that blue trend line and falls mm -hmm. outside that, I would place my stop loss above the previous high that it made in making the move upward in the first place. So above 1916. How far above? 10 to 15 to 20 pips. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. Pound dollar, four hour chart. This is an example of tons of trades that we set up over and over and over again, and it gives you an example of all these trend line tools. So we had a, way back here, Dave, we had a point A and a point B on our four-hour chart yeah. from long ago, and that's a dashed one, and it extended out into the future. Now, following that, we started to be able to draw these cool new trend lines. And, a, and you can see this is a red trend, trend line drawn from point A to point B. And when that one was broken in this area, stop loss goes above the high at the very top, goes above this level here, and it falls to the, tr it falls to the, yeah. the longer term trend line. Yeah. Later on, we built two new blue trend lines, and it traded from one trend line to the next and so on and so forth. You could see this red trend line down here and this red trend line up here, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. 
for example, we've still got this old dashed trend line up here. Let's color this blue, and let's make the width wider so we can see it better. Let's get rid of these old ones so we get rid of any confusion. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use that old blue trend line to plan a trace. I'm going to draw a trend line from all the way up here, all the way out here. Okay. I'm going to extend it to the right. I'm going to make it red, and I'm going to make it thicker. You don't see it. Okay. There you go. So, let's go back in time, and we'll show you these trend lines again. We started off with way, 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 way long ago on a very short-term chart. We started off with this set of trend line, this trend line here, based on these two points down here at the bottom, point A and point B. We started off with that, and we extended that trend line way out into the future. And it eventually, we drew an A to B trend line over here. It fell below that trend line, and then it fell to the blue trend line. Recently. We have created for ourselves a new opportunity. Let's go to the daily chart because it might be more obvious there. Looks great on the daily chart. On the daily yeah, chart, we could trade a break above this red trend line drawn from point A across point B. If it closes above that red trend line, Dave, we could move all the way up to the blue trend line. Yep. So that blue trend line drawn so long ago comes back. Comes back. Comes back and is useful later on. And you can see the the beginning point of this red trend line was actually a pivot point that happened. A pivot area. Not sorry, a pivot point. Pivot area. Not to be confused with pivot point, which is a mathematical calculation. Yeah. It's a pivot area. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is the pound switch. I'm gonna turn it off and turn it back on again. This is the pound switch four hour. Okay, let's see if we can draw some trend lines on the pound switch. Which trend line do you draw first? All those kind of questions I want to answer here. Let's just say we pulled this up. I, I haven't looked at this recently, so I've got basically no preconceived notions about it. So what I'm going to look for are trend lines. I could draw a trend line from this point A at the top here, across these candles for point B, and extend that to the right. But I don't have any. I don't have any second trend line to draw to trade it up to. Okay. So I'm going to remove that because we're specifically looking for double trend line opportunities. Yeah. Um. I could draw a trend line across this point to this point down here. Okay. Extend it to the right. We're going to make this green because this is going to be a flatter trend line. And I'm going to look now for a steeper trend line to draw. Well, I could have drawn like that against those. Mm -hmm. Let me do that. Uh, five, let's color this blue. Let's extend it to the right. All right. That's kind of what we look for here. Let's review it so we can really get a handle on it. I'm going to move this down here out of the way. As you already know, this is the pound Swiss four out. This down here is point A. This is point B. They're very close to each other, but that doesn't matter. It's totally acceptable. Then we get a lowercase a right up, right in this area, right there, and a lowercase b right here for our shorter term trend line. And now we're breaking that line now. That's that's happening that's right now. Stop loss on this trade. You know, we've got a nice recent high, Dave, right here. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so let's say let's say we entered the trade at 2.0446. Okay. Let's say we entered there, and our stop loss was 150 points higher. Let's just actually make it 160 points higher at 2.0600. Okay? Okay. Let's just make it all the way up there. And our profit target at an even 2,000. That's a 160-point stop loss 
in exchange for a 446 point profit target. That sounds That's reasonable. That's an acceptable risk to reward ratio. Sure. It would take over a month for this to happen, meaning this is not going to close anytime soon. This right. is a longer term situation that cannot be resolved in the short term. It takes your focus off of short term ins and outs of the market and puts your focus on longer term stuff. If you're interested in shorter term trading, why don't we take a look at, let's take a look at, um, let's look at the pound dollar and let's look at a 15 minute chart and see if we can find, let's look at 30 minutes because it looks like we got something a little bit shorter term that we can do. Okay. We could do something, um, oh, we already looked at the pound dollar, let's look at a different one. Let's look at the euro dollar short term chart. It'll take us a minute to get this chart up. To be blank, and now you should see some candles. If you see some candles, just let us know so we make sure we've got this on. I'm going to look for some different uh, trend lines here. Point A to point B across the bottom here. We'll make this green. Okay, that's point A to point B. And then we could draw a second trend line from point a to point B, C, D, and E, mm -hmm. which I'll identify in just a moment. So this still isn't very short term. It's still on the 30 minute chart. We're not this is this isn't super short term. But if you look at this closer up, there's lots of points. Let's let's go down to like a 10 minute chart and we'll identify all of these one at a time. So here's point A starting place. Here's point B, Z, which rhymes with B. But it's not the same line. And then we have point C, D, E, and F. So there's multiple. So multiple points makes it a better trend line? Oh yeah, because it's definitely a point where the market has obviously had trouble and struggled to break through. And now, so a break of that trend line is more, that makes it more significant. Yeah. Now let's jump into the five minute chart and see if we can get something even more pronounced. Wow, we could use point F as a starting point. What color should this one be? Red? Is that okay? With yeah, you? that's fine. So red is like emergency steepness, right? Mm -hmm. And look at that. We go from point F, which is, let's just use little AA, little BB, and little CC. So now we've got this third trend line. So we could trade a close below the red trend line mm -hmm. as a short-term steep break on the five-minute chart down to the blue trend line. Now, in case you don't think that that's worth it, let's look at the number of pips that we'd be targeting. If we, if we open the trade at approximately, and we have to make this up because we don't know where the trend line break sure. is going to occur. If we open this trade at approximately 56.50, we would be trading that down to 55.26. Now, last time I checked, that's about 120 pips. Yeah. That's including the spread. That's a great trade for the five-minute chart. Yeah. Hello, perfectly and, reasonable. And your stop would be above the highs there, which so is actually pretty be, close. Yeah, your stop would be about 50 pips. Yeah. Up at 5,700. Okay. Totally reasonable to do that. Then you take a, cl a close below 55.26, that trend line, and we trade it down to the next trend line, which is about 85 pips lower than that. Got it. If any questions about that, we welcome your questions. So it works short term as well as long term. Here's the Euro daily. On the daily chart, you can see that I drew an A to B. I'm going to pull this chart up in just a moment. Just give us a moment. Okay. Uh, you should be able to see it now. Point A to B down here. And this trend line, we're going to color this green, Dave, because this is our longest term okay. trend line. Then we had a channel up here. This brings us sort of full circle. 
to the concept of trading a channel break all the way down to a green trend line. Mm. Do you remember that guy in our in our morning training? His name's Pablo, I think, and he mm -hmm. said we might see the euro rise up to 5,700 before it breaks down. Mm -hmm. I remember that. He's been totally proven to be right. Why did he think that? Well, the currency pair fell outside of the channel here at point little a and rose up at point B to retouch the bottom of that old channel. Yeah. Dave, here's how I would trade down to that green trend line now. Are we in the midst of a super breakdown? Well, only time can tell. This is the daily chart. Let's go down to the 60-minute chart and let's draw ourselves a trend line. How about that trend line here? Okay. We'll make it a, let's see, what color should we make? This should be, let's make it red. Okay. How about that? So now let's go back to the four-hour chart. So a break below that on the one-hour chart could take us all the way down to the green trend line. So says if a trend line has multiple points, it is very strong support resistance. So don't you think that the break of that kind of trend line has a higher probability of being a false breakout? Yeah, sure. Doesn't mean I'm not going to take it. Remember, my risk to reward ratio is so good that I don't have to walk away from these trades. But right. The question isn't how can I be right every time. The question is how can I minimize the effects of not being right every time. Good trading, point. trading objectively and rule based and mechanically is the attempt to, to to turn currency trading into a predictable endeavor. Trading subjectively and accepting the market as a chaotic enterprise allows you to reduce your trade size have a good risk-to-reward ratio, and not worry about how many losing trades you have. Joyce says, if a trend line is broken and you take the trade, but the candles mosey along, how long do you stay in the trade before realizing there isn't enough momentum to carry it to the profit target? Two answers. One answer is, first of all, probably forever until the stop loss. Second of all, if you do your testing on support and resistance, you know how long your trades are generally open. And if you start to reach the point where your trade is open longer than you're generally accustomed to, you know your trade has gone on too long. Sometimes, AB says, there are two highs above the trend line break, a high close to the break, and a higher high before that first high. <laughs> where would you put the stop just above the first super high or above the recent high? I know what you're saying, AB, and it's a good question. I think we covered that in the... Aussie dollar, no. Pound Swiss? Yes, we did. All right. Um, what AB says is we've got a recent high here and a more recent high here. Can we put the stop above just this, this lower one to keep our stop loss closer? Or do you want to put it above the, the most? The answer is yes, you can put it up next to the, the closer one. That's the answer. Yeah. All right. I, I really like this euro dollar trade. I really like it because it's hitting the bottom of that old channel. And I'd love to see this thing reverse down. So let me just uh, let me go down to the let me go down to the five minute chart. Let's trade this thing the whole way. Make sure this trend line is drawn. That's, that's drawn well. Let's do this. Let's go down and even go to a reduced time frame. Limited time only. And let's do a five-minute trend. Point A, point B, point C, Dave? Yeah. That's good enough. Mm -hmm. Got three approximate lines. Let's make this one turquoise blue. And look at this, folks. Now we've got, remember, it's pretty easy to identify once you get the hang of it, point A, point B, point C. It's, listen, we've got now multiple trend lines. We could trade from one trend line to the next and keep using them over and over and over. No charge. Okay. I already fired it up. Here, I'll do it again. Here, I'm going to do it again. Here we go. What I did was, we were working from the 60-minute chart, and we were talking about using a break of the 60-minute trend line to trade down to our longer-term daily or four-hour trend line. Okay? 
So that was this red line, trend line break down to this green one. And we looked at that on the 60-minute chart. And then I said, why don't we go down to the five-minute chart and draw a trend line to trade down to the red trend line on the 60-minute mm. chart. So a close below A, B, and C's trend line, the turquoise one, could lead to a move all the way down to the red trend line, which could lead to a break of that trend line, leading to a move all the way down to the daily trend line right here down at the bottom. So you're able to get in on a, a, a big move down yeah. early. Starting your trading early on a potential massive breakdown, and that's why I called it the super breakdown. Super possibly. breakdown. Super breakdown. Breakdown. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Pound dollar, four hour. Yeah, we could do that. There's not no, there's not much there on the four hour mm. pound dollar. Pound yen four hour? Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna remove all the tools. Let's see what we got. Point A. Point B. Let's make that our green trend line, our lower one, upper upper lower trend line support. Lower support. Okay, so that's that's one trend line, and I think it's pretty easy for us now. Remember, folks, this is the pound yen four hour. That's where we're starting. Now we're going to move it down to the sixty minute chart, and I think it's obvious that we could draw a blue trend line under here. Yep. Under here. Under where? No, under here. There we go. There's your trend line. A break of trend line blue leads to a trend line green. Fantastic. Yeah. I'll capture that all over again. Just give me a sec. I'm going to erase the line and I'm going to redraw it to everybody. This is the four hour chart. So it's the pound yen four hour chart. I'm going to draw a trend line from point A to point B. And then extend it out to the right so it captures everything. I'm going to color it green. And uh, I didn't extend it out to the right. I'm going to do that correctly. And this is point, point Q, point, point A. This is point B. Pretty obvious, pretty easy to see. Mm -hmm. Major V formation. Yeah. We're going to go down to the 60 minute chart now. And I'm going to say, hey, wait a minute. This could be little a or little q. And this could be little b. And I could get myself, I'm going to get myself a trend line. Mm -hmm. I grow up, I'm going to be a trend line. And nobody can tell me any differently. Trend property, make it five. Let's make it blue. Let's extend it to the right. And boom, there we have a multiple double super trend line Sunday. Fantastic. And that's the tastiness that comes with every bite of trend line goodness. I love that. Taste. Now made with real lemon. Awesome. What do we call this? Trend line surprise? I don't know. What do we call it? I mean, we've got to come up with a name for all this mumbo jumbo for that double trend line stuff. Mm. Double trend line tastiness. tastiness. <laughs> That's kind of a long name. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But it sure looks good to me. But it sure looks good to me. Oh, too. yeah. Well, that's the trend line stuff. That's the support and resistance webinar. We're happy to take questions from anybody who has them. We dare you to ask a question. Grand Canyon trade. Now you're talking. The Grand Canyon trade, yeah. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's in Arizona. And you That's know how awesome. we're partial to Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, Grand Canyon, Steve. You're the wiener. That's it. The Grand Canyon trade. I like that. How about two trendy? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That is That's awesome. good. Yeah. That is a really good one too. Yeah, the two trendy. Crocodiles now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah? What's your more effective? Trend lines or moving averages? 
I like both. I like both a lot. And I, I never confuse one for the other. Meaning, I either use a trend line or a moving average and I stick with it. You don't mix and match? I try not to. I see. You could use a trend line break to get to a moving average, but I try not to try to put a moving average and a trend line on the same move. Got it. The trend lines are drawn from high to high without the wicks. Um, now and later, you could do with or without wicks. Either way is okay. I use the wicks. Price went there, why wouldn't I? Yeah. Yep. But many, many people use the close. And let me tell you why. If you look at a, a, a line chart, these lines are different. Look at that. Look at where B would go. A and B would be in two completely different spaces, mm -hmm. wouldn't they? Because a line chart is based on the close. Fascinating, in my opinion. Totally fascinating. If you use a candle chart, it's a whole different ballgame. Why don't I use a line chart? Because if I use the line chart, when the trade opens, I wouldn't know if it fell and hit my trend line because I could only see the, the closing price. I wouldn't be uh, able to yeah. see the other one. How many bars below the line is it okay to consider it broken? I like one candle to close below the line. So there's no magic number of like three candles closing below. That means right. it's not a fake out. So if, if one candle closes below the line, you could sell one pit below that. Or if one candle rises above the line, you could buy one pip above that. Right. Strength is, do you trade the bounce off the trend line in the direction of the overall trend? No, I don't. Uh, many people do. Max has done, in, over the years, I've seen Max do some incredible things with that. Mm. Do you wait for a retest of the line? I call that a Winnipeg move or a throwback move, and yes, it would be perfectly reasonable to wait for a retest of the line. Love it. Great right. idea. Do you get scared of moving averages just below a trend line? No. On a candle, what time frame? Any time frame. Any time frame you're on. Yep. If you drew your, let's say, John, that you drew, let's say you drew your blue trend line as we did on the 60-minute chart. Then I'm going to trade the break of that blue trend line on the 60-minute chart. Right. Uh, Great question, John. I mean, that's an excellent question. That's what, are the best questions consistent? That, what are the best questions I've ever heard? It's really good. Because it does, it does get confusing. If you've drawn them on all these different time frames, then which time frame do you use? All right. Well, that wraps up our support and resistance webinar for Tuesday, May 20th. 20th. 2008. It's May 20. I forgot the date. It's my 14th wedding anniversary. And I forgot the oh! I did remember the anniversary. There's a present yeah. arriving at the house presently. Now, now, wait a minute. Our wives are going out together tonight. I know. It's your anniversary. <laughs> it's my anniversary. <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I really enjoyed spending time with you. I know Dave did, too. We yep. really um, had a good time today. I thought... I thought this was a really well... This was so informative, this Rob. This really yeah. informative. This is something that... Honestly, I had no idea what we were going to do today. Really? We made that up as we went along. Wow, I'm glad to and be along for the cool. ride. That kind it's of went really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll say hi to Max. It's very nice of you to say that. Thanks, everybody. It's um, been a pleasure to spend time with you today. And uh, don't forget, go to, for more information about this, postcards.fx. Com, and I have a new commitment slash obligation to update that uh, that blog often. So I'm going to yeah. review these. I'm going to post these in that blog right now. I'm going to do a couple of them right now. Awesome. So we talk about fib levels next time. Maybe. <laughs> Amy, you're so awesome. Yeah, if you want to, we can. Okay, see you later, everybody. We're closing out. Over and out. Bye-bye.